Welcome to the 2020 General Election Judge Training, presented by the Illinois State Board of Elections. The following is a video covering considerations for visually impaired voters who may visit your polling place. HAVA, Training and Awareness Curriculum, Training the Poll Worker, Empowering the Blind, Can I have your name, please? One of the most common mistakes made by sighted people when interacting with a blind person is to assume that the blind person is also hearing impaired. Speak in a normal voice. Let the blind person tell you if you need to speak louder. Another common mistake is to ask the blind person's spouse or friend for the blind person's name. I'm sorry, what is your full name? My name is Steve Booth. Thank you. The voting machines are behind you. Can you see? I'm sorry. I mean, can you find them okay? Don't be afraid to use words such as see, look, or watch when interacting with a blind person. They use these words all the time. If you tell me which direction I should go, I will be able to locate one of the voting machines. Okay, there's a line between where you are and the voting machines. One of the other poll workers will show you the way. Let me move these chairs out of your way. Come this way and I'll help you. Some blind people use a long white cane to navigate. Others use a guide dog. It's not necessary to move things out of a blind person's way. Uh, Give me your arm. Uh, let, me, let me take your arm. Okay. For safety reasons, it's better to allow the blind person to take your arm rather than hold the blind person's arm. This will allow the blind person to walk a step behind and to continue to navigate with their long white cane. Let's avoid this line. Take my arm and I'll guide you to the front of the line so you'll be next in line to vote. There's no need for me to jump in front of the line just because I am blind. I'll wait in line just like any other voter. Okay. I've heard blind people have special capabilities such as a heightened sense of smell, touch, and hearing. Is this true, and does this help you? It's a common misconception that blind people have a heightened sense of smell, hearing, and touch. However, the truth is, because the blind rely on these senses more than a sighted person, they may get more information through those senses than a sighted person does. The voter access machine is a few steps straight ahead. Give me your card and I'll put it in the machine for you. Oh, that's okay. If you just give me the instructions, I'll operate the machine myself. If I have any questions, I'll ask you. Okay. The slot is horizontal and is at the top right-hand corner of the machine. The card goes in lengthwise. Some accessible voting machines use a voter access card to activate the audio ballot, while other machines may use a telephone or other device. The audio ballot is working properly. You should have no problems as you proceed with your vote. Thank you. Sure thing. Thank you. Voting privately and independently for the first time in my life was a great experience. You're welcome. That's the way it should be. I'm glad it was a positive experience. Thanks again. Have a nice day. Our cybersecurity team has put together some important basic tips to remember to keep our elections safe and secure. Tip 1. Exercise normal caution. If something seems suspicious, you should contact your election authority's office. If a voting machine is not working properly, make sure there is nothing suspiciously wrong with it before you assume it is just a faulty machine. Make sure to always have paper backups. Check that there are enough physical ballots before the polling place opens. Make sure your voters trust that their vote was counted and it was for the candidate they actually voted for. 
Tip 3. Be confident in your training as an election judge. Know your opening procedures, during the day procedures, and closing procedures. Make sure you know how to work the voting machines and are aware of who to contact should the machine malfunction. Bad actors may try and manipulate you. This is harder to do when you are confident about the training and knowledge you have received. Tip number four. Monitor time spent in the voting booths. A voter probably will not take more than 10 minutes in the voting booth. If you believe they are taking longer than normal, Check in with the voter to see if they need help with anything. And tip number five, be aware of physical devices in the polling place. If you see something suspicious being brought into the polling place or voting booth, i.e. a USB drive, laptops, wire cutters, or screwdrivers, contact your election authority. If someone shows up claiming to repair or inspect a voting machine or other equipment in the polling place, Make sure to clear this with your election authority before you let the individual proceed. The following are some important time frames prior to Election Day. Grace period registration and voting begins October 7th and continues through Election Day. For grace period registration, a voter can go directly to the Election Authority's office or any other designated site and register to vote. The grace period voter will need to provide sufficient identification when utilizing same-day registration and voting. Voters can also update their existing registration through grace period registration and voting. Early voting begins on September 24th and ends November 2nd. Vote by mail begins September 24th. Voters may continue to request vote by mail ballots through October 29th by mail and November 2nd in person. Voters may begin to request vote by mail ballots on June 16th. Additionally, voters will be sent an application to request a vote by mail ballot by August 1st if they have voted in either the 2018 general election, the 2019 consolidated elections, or the 2020 general primary election, if they have updated their registration, or if they are a newly registered voter. Regular registration closes October 6th. Online registration on the State Board of Elections website closes on October 18th. If you are not scheduled to work in your precinct on Election Day, please make sure to use advantage of one of these voting options beforehand so you get the chance to vote. During this presentation, we will cover three chapters. Chapter 1, Before the Polls Open. Chapter 2, During Voting Hours and Chapter 3, After the Polls Close. Chapter 1, Before the Polls Open. When you arrive at the polling place, you should first arrange the voting booths for as much privacy as possible, allowing for the orderly flow of the voter traffic in the polling place, but please make sure the voting booths are at least six feet apart. Use tape to mark off six feet of space for voters in line and sanitize anything you think that may need to be wiped down. Please remember that the tabulators must be in full view of the judges. Please arrive at your polling place at the designated time. For many jurisdictions, this is around 5 a.m. If all other judges do not show up, give them around 15 to 20 minutes, then try to get a hold of them. If you are unsuccessful, call your election authority. If your election authority cannot find your replacement judge, you as election judges are allowed to swear in another judge after 6.15 a.m. who is of the same political affiliation as the missing judge. Check supplies and make sure nothing is missing. Make sure you have enough pens to replace them each time a voter uses them, or that you have enough sanitation wipes to wipe them down each time enough ballot covers for each voter, hand sanitizer, tape to mark off six feet of space for voters in lines, and other sanitation and safety protocols deemed necessary by the State of Illinois Department of Public Health and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Set up and reconfigure that voting area. And as always, please call your election authority if you discover any problems.
stay organized throughout the day. Match your supplies with a checklist in your supply kit. If anything is missing, call your election authority. Most election authorities will have separate binders or folders with before the polls open supplies, during voting hour supplies, after the polls close supplies, and provisional supplies. Make sure to keep these supplies in order. Make sure your polling place looks like the bottom picture, not the top one. As an election judge, you are an officer of the circuit court. It is your job to uphold the U.S. and the Illinois Constitution, and you are the sole authority over the polling place and the campaign free zone. And it is also your job to ensure the proper conduct of the election and over the poll watchers. Remember to rotate positions. It reduces fraud and it is law. You act as a board and the majority rules. All judges have equal authority as there is no head judge. No matter if this is your first time serving or you are a veteran election judge. Remember though, if you are encountering a situation that you are unsure of and you are unsure of the proper way it should be handled, please contact your election authority for guidance. It is critical that we make sure the voter is given the correct ballot sheet. Check that the date and precinct designation on the ballot sheet are correct. Ballot sheets are designated by code or number. The ballot sheet code or number should match what's on the voter's application. The code or number can be found on the voter's application or in the electronic poll book and will match the code or number on the top of the ballot. Additional ballot styles are added in precincts in which all voters do not vote the same offices or propositions. It is very important that the voter is given the correct ballot sheet. You want to compare each ballot style to each specimen ballot to verify that the following is listed correctly. Each office, the vote for on each office, and each candidate. If all of this is correct, all of the judges will sign the certificate of inspection. When the tabulator is turned on and the zero tape prints, you will need to conduct the same inspection with the zero tape against the specimen ballot. The certificate of inspection is signed to indicate that the ballots, the specimen ballots, and the tabulator tapes have all been inspected and proofed. By signing this certificate, you are indicating that you have received the proper number of ballots. Completing the certificate of inspection will also help you complete your statement of ballots, which must be completed at the end of the night. A list of valid writing candidates will be provided to you in your precinct kits. There will only be valid write-in candidates on this list, which are candidates who filed the appropriate declaration of intent to be a write-in candidate at least 61 days prior to the election day. This list should not be posted anywhere in the polling place. However, this list can be shown to a voter if they request to see it. Signs must be placed around the polling place prior to opening. The polling place entrance sign and the ADA compliant sign should clearly identify the entrance. The ADA compliant sign might not be on the same entrance used by most voters. Make sure to place the ADA compliant sign on the appropriate door with the accessible entrance. The public roadway polling place sign should also be placed on the public roadway nearest to the entrance of the polling place and must clearly identify the polling place. On the main entrance, also place the six feet apart notice, the face coverings required notice, and any other recommendations by the Illinois Department of Public Health and the Center for Disease Control. Please remember to post instructions on how to properly darken the oval and how to cast a write-in vote in the voting booths and around the polling place. All other notices only have to be posted in a predominant location in the polling place. Also post a six feet apart notice, the face covering noticed, and all other notices recommended by the Illinois Department of Public Health and the Center for Disease Control. Who else may be present in the polls on election day? Law enforcement officials, representatives of the Attorney General's office, the state's attorney, your election authority, the State Board of Elections, and qualified poll watchers with 
proper credentials. Poll watchers are the only ones that must provide written poll watcher credentials to the election judges at the polls on election day. Even though poll watchers are the only visitors to the polling place who must surrender an official credential, all other visitors are still required to show their official ID or credentials to an election judge to confirm that they are eligible to be present in the polling place. Poll watcher qualifications. First, the poll watcher must be registered to vote in Illinois. Poll watchers do not have to be from the precinct in which they are poll watching or registered in that county. They just have to be registered in Illinois. They must have credentials issued either by the State Board of Elections or your election authority. They must have separate credentials for each precinct they enter, even if there are two precincts in one polling place. Poll watchers can be appointed by any of the following entities, candidates, political parties, qualified civic organizations, state civic organizations, or proponents or opponents to a proposition. Candidates and precinct committee persons can also be poll watchers. Candidates will have a candidate credential rather than a poll watcher credential and must surrender these to the election judge. Poll watcher credentials are collected when they first enter the polling place and you are to keep them. Poll watchers must utilize a sign in sign out sheet when coming and going throughout the day. Some jurisdictions have separate envelopes for poll watcher credentials and the reverse side of this envelope is utilized as the sign in sign out sheet. You will return the credentials to your election authority at the end of the day. If a poll watcher chooses to leave the polling place and return at a later time, they do not have to file a new credential with the election judge since they have already registered at an earlier visit. They simply sign back in and then continue to observe the activity in the polling place. Poll watchers may observe all proceedings and records relating to the conduct of the election, but they cannot touch or handle any of the materials. They may come and go throughout the day as long as their behavior is not disruptive. They can call to attention incorrect procedures, and they may challenge the qualifications of a voter. Poll watchers can be in the polling place before the polls open to observe any opening procedures, including the inspection of the ballot box to ensure that the compartments are empty. They can be in the polling place during actual voting hours, as well as after the polls close to observe any of your after the polls close duties. Anytime that you are in the polling place on election day, a qualified poll watcher can be there as well. Remember, the secrecy of the ballot must always be maintained. Voters want to be able to come into the polling place, cast their ballots in private, and leave without destruction. The poll watcher should not interfere with the voter in any way. Poll watchers should be placed on the station or chair at least six feet away from all voting booths, equipment, voters, and election judges to comply with the Illinois Department of Public Health and Center for Disease Control guidelines. The campaign free zone consists of an area of 100 horizontal feet expanding from the entrance to the polling place or room. Within the zone, there can be no campaign signs, buttons, or electioneering of any kind. Electioneering is defined as advocating for or against the interest of a candidate, a political party, or a political proposition that is on the ballot. You should have markers or cones to designate this campaign free zone. Churches and private schools have the option to not allow any electioneering on their property. In this instance, the markers shall be placed near the boundaries of the property, adjacent to the thoroughfares or walkways leading to the entrance used by the voters. If the polling room is located in a building with two or more floors and the polling room is located on a floor above or below the ground floor, then the marker shall be placed at a distance of 100 horizontal feet from the nearest elevator or staircase used by the voters on the ground floor to access the floor where the polling room is located. If the polling room is located within a private business, church, or school building and the distance of 100 horizontal feet ends within the interior of the building, then the marker shall be placed outside of the building at each entrance used by the voters to enter the building. 
Remember that you are the sole authority of the Campaign Free Zone and you are responsible for enforcing the rules of the Campaign Free Zone. During voting hours. At 6 a.m., unlock the doors and announce out loud that the polls are open. Replace any missing election judges as approved by your election authority and collect any poll watcher credentials. A list will be provided to you that indicates who has voted early, who has voted by mail, and who has utilized grace period registration and voting. Please make sure to check this list. For the vast majority of voters on Election Day, ID is not required in order for them to vote. There are, however, a few situations where this may be necessary. These voters will be flagged to show you that they need to show ID before voting. These may be individuals who have applied to register to vote by mail, but they provided inadequate proof of identity to the election authority and therefore their registration has not been completed. They may also be newly registered voters. Grace period voters will also be required to show identification. They will remain ineligible to vote by mail or in person until such proof is presented. These individuals will be flagged in the verification records going out to the polls on election day. If a newly registered voter provides sufficient identification, they will be allowed to vote. What qualifies as a proper ID? A driver's license or state ID, a utility bill, student ID and mail address to their address of residence, a government check, a paycheck, a lease or a contract of residence, a bank statement, or any other government check. It does not have to be a photo ID, however they must show that their name and address documentation match your records. If a voter was issued a vote by mail ballot, they have not voted it, and they surrender the ballot to you on election day, they may vote as normal. If they claim they never received their vote by mail ballot, they may sign an affidavit and vote on election day. However, if they received a vote by mail ballot, they don't have it with them, and they can't go retrieve the ballot, they will have to provisionally vote. A voter cannot revoke or cancel a ballot that has already been voted. Challenging a voter is simply the process that happens when you have a reason to believe the voter might not be eligible to cast a ballot. Even if a voter is challenged, there are often many ways to resolve that challenge and ensure that the voter does get to vote after they have provided the appropriate information. Voters may be challenged by poll watchers, election judges, or another voter. Reasons for these challenges may include that the voter has moved, they have already voted, they changed their name, there is no record of their registration, or they are not the same person as the registered voter. The voter may resolve a challenge by presenting proper identification or other documentation to show that they are eligible to cast a ballot. Remember that a voter challenge is not valid unless the majority of the election judges agree that the challenge is legitimate. Even if a challenge is upheld, the affected voter must be notified of their right to vote provisionally. Voter assistance is for voters with disabilities that affects their ability to mark the ballot or for voters who cannot read or write the English language. Who can and cannot give assistance? Who can give assistance? A friend, a relative, two election judges, one from each political party, can provide that assistance. Who cannot give assistance? a voter's employer, an agent of that voter's employer, an officer of a voter's union, or an agent of the voter's union. Intoxicated voters cannot receive assistance in the voting booth. Addressing voters who refuse to wear a face mask. All voters must be allowed to exercise their right to vote. 
regardless of face coverings or distancing compliance. For voters who forgot their face coverings, poll workers can provide a disposable face covering if available. What to do in response to a voter who refuses to wear a face covering. Take a deep breath, speak with a calm voice at a normal volume and communicate that the voters right to vote will be respected and resist the urge to engage on the underlying objection. Take greater care to maximize social distancing and attempt to keep everyone calm and limit potential escalation. If the situation escalates, Call local law enforcement first if you believe the safety of any person in the polling place is in jeopardy. If you feel threatened or intimidated, or if the voter feels threatened or intimidated, or if a disturbance occurs, call your election authority. Make sure that more than one election judge is present in any conflict situation with one judge engaging the voter and the other standing back to assess the situation. Election judges may want to use the following language. We regret that you are unwilling to follow the guidelines, but we respect your right to vote. Please give us a bit of time to organize the area to provide additional physical distance between you and our election judges, poll watchers, and other voters. Judges station number one is the application judge. The applications to vote, the affidavits, the demonstrator ballot sheets, and a number of pens should be placed at this station. When the voter approaches this station, greet them and ask them to announce their name and address. Confirm that the name and address match your records. Even if you know the voter, you should still announce their name and address out loud so the other election judges and poll watchers can hear it. Verify that the voter has not already voted by checking your list of those who have already voted early, by mail, or through grace period voting. The voters should complete the application and sign it. Offer the voter instructions on the demonstrator ballot sheet and remind the voters to turn over the ballot to vote offices and public questions that may be on the back of the ballot. Make sure that when you offer the instructions to the voter, you are doing so on the demonstrator ballot sheet and not with the actual ballot. Announce the voter's name and address out loud and pass that voter to the verification judge at Station 2. Station 2 will have two verification judges, one from each political party. The scan signatures, the binder books, the electronic poll books, and a listing of different types of ballot styles should be placed at the station. Here, you will locate the voter's verification record, compare and verify the signature and address on the application and make sure it matches the voter's records, and determine the correct ballot style. If the ballot style is not indicated on the voter's application, make sure to do so. And initial the application. Judges station number three is a ballot distribution judge. The spindles for the applications and the ballots should be placed at this station. Here, you will check the applications for the judge's initials and spindle the applications and number them consecutively. The applications or the voter roster will indicate the proper ballot style for each voter and use that to determine the proper ballot style for the voter. Initial the ballot sheet in ink. Make sure to initial the ballot sheet in the designated spot, which is usually the upper right-hand corner of the ballot. This spot is clearly designated as the spot for the judge's initials, which is important because initialing the ballot in the wrong spot can cause issues when the voter tabulates the ballot. If there are two different precincts in one polling place, you can use two different colors to initial ballot sheets for easier separation. Provide the voter with the correct ballot sheet. Offer the secrecy sleeve or cover and instructions and reminders on how to vote and use the secrecy sleeve and direct the voter to the voting booth. Spoiled ballots are ballots on which the voter has made an error while marking. The voter should request a new ballot from the distribution judge. 
The judge will mark the voter's application to indicate that the ballot or ballots were spoiled. Ballot envelopes will be placed in the before 7 p.m. envelope for spoiled ballots. The voter will process and tabulate the corrected ballot as normal. The voter places the ballot in this envelope and seals the envelope. Then the election judge will put the voter envelope into this envelope. If it was determined at the first station that the voter is only eligible for a provisional ballot, contact the election authority to determine the provisional voter's correct precinct, then follow the provisional ballot procedures. A provisional ballot shall be deemed valid and counted as a vote if the voter provided the election authority with the necessary documentation within seven days of the election. Provisional voting reduces confrontation, corrects mistakes in the registration process, and helps update voter registration records. It should be used when the judges have no record of registration or a voter reviews, refuses to register. If a voter did not provide ID when registering and they cannot provide one on election day, if the voter's right to vote has been successfully challenged, or if the voter's name appears on the list of people who have already voted. Remember to always call your election authority before issuing a provisional ballot. Provisional voter affidavits vary by jurisdiction. However, if yours looks like this, these are the steps you will take. The voter and the election judge will both have sections to fill out on this affidavit. The voter will be given a ballot and envelope and directed to come back to the judges after voting. The voter will seal the ballot in the envelope before giving it back to the judges. The judges will then issue a receipt to the voter to follow up after election day. Put this envelope into a separate securable container and return it to the counting center after the polls close. If this was the provisional ballot envelope and affidavit used by your jurisdiction, you will take the following steps. The affidavit should show through the window of the envelope. You will insert the sealed provisional ballot envelope behind the affidavit, and you will give the voter the yellow provisional ballot receipt. We will return this to the counting center in a separate sealable container. Provisional ballots should never go in the tabulator. Remember to track your numbers throughout the day. Verify that the number of applications is equal to the number of ballots cast. Check your number every hour. If your numbers are in balance every hour, you will be in balance when the polls close. Judges station number four is the ballot box judge. Extra secrecy sleeves should be kept at this station. Here you will check ballots for the judge's initials. The voter will insert the ballot into the tabulator unless they request your assistance. Make sure to check periodically in the voting booths or anything voters may have left behind. It is important that the ballot box judge not hover too close to the tabulator, especially when the voter is inserting the ballot. Please use extra discretion and ask the voter for permission if you have to approach the voter while they are at the tabulator, whether due to an issue with the tabulator or otherwise. Voters want to leave the polling place know that they successfully voted for their office and candidates without anybody seeing their votes. Please remember to maintain a distance of six feet from the voters at all times, but in a place where you can still view the tabulators. The tabulators will automatically identify overvoted ballots. Voters can either spoil the ballot and request a new one or cast the ballot as is. If the power goes out or there is an issue with your tabulator, contact your election authority immediately. Then use your emergency bin to hold the ballots until the equipment is fixed. After the polls close, insert these ballots into the tabulator. Voting should never stop. Make absolutely sure that you wait until after the polls are closed to open up the emergency bin to grab any ballots that were placed there during the day. These ballots can only be tabulated after the polls close. You may want to utilize gloves while handling these ballots. 
curbside voting. The voter should notify the election authority the day before. Two judges, one from each political party, will go out to the car and complete the voting process as if the voter was in the polling place. The voter will complete the application. The judges will do the verification. They will deliver the ballot out with the secrecy sleeve and allow the voter to vote in secrecy. The, then the two judges will bring the ballot back inside and insert it into the tabulator. If you have a voter who is not on your curbside voting list, but is still requesting a curbside vote, when time permits, still allow the voter, who may not be able to physically enter the polling place, the opportunity to cast their ballot. At 6.30 p.m., announce that the polls will close in one half hour. And please don't forget to vote if you are in your voting precinct. At 7 p.m., announce out loud that the polls are closed. All voters in line at 7 p.m. are allowed to vote. Have an election judge or a law enforcement official stand at the end of the line so you know where the line ends. Then close and lock the doors once all voters have left and remove the polling place signs. After the polls close. Who is authorized to remain in the polls after they close? Election judges, poll watchers, law enforcement officials, representatives of the State Board of Elections, Attorney General's Office, State's Attorney, and the Election Authority are all allowed to remain in the polls. Before closing out the machine, Check the emergency bin for ballots. Remove any ballots that you may find and insert them into the tabulator. Now we're going to open the ballot box and remove the ballots from the tabulator. You're going to compare the number of ballots to the number of applications. The number of ballots of each type must match the number of applications for each ballot style. If the numbers do not agree, We'll have you recount the ballots and check the number of applications and make sure they're numbered and spindled correctly. Then you're going to process the write-in votes. And again, when handling these ballots, you want to use gloves and wash your hands thoroughly afterwards. When processing write-in votes, ensure that the name is on the valid write-in list. And then you want to determine the voter's intent. So the spelling of the candidate does not have to be exact as long as you can tell who the voter's intent was to vote for. The name must be printed or written on the ballot line, not stamped or stickered, and the oval must be darkened. If there is a valid write-in vote, you want to tally it up on the appropriate sheet, but if there are no valid write-in votes, you can go ahead and write none across the sheet and all election judges must sign this sheet. We want to remind you to leave your polling place clean and tidy. So not like this. Review the checklist provided by your election authority and return the proper materials. When you do return those materials, you're going to need two eligible judges, one from each political party, and you're going to deliver those materials directly to the election authority's office when everything is done so that your election authority can close out the election. And then we just wanted to remind you that your election authority certifies the official election results. The results on your vote total tapes are not the official precinct results. The vote by mail ballot totals, early vote counts, and provisional ballot counts still have to be counted, and that can take up to 21 days. Now we're going to go through the optical scan examination. All right, so these are true or false. Election judges serve as officers of the circuit court and are the sole authority in the polling place on election day. They have the authority to make decisions according to federal and state election law. That is true. 
after being appointed and sworn in as an election judge, he or she should be available to serve at each election during that two-year appointed term. That is true. Before the poll is open, the judges must check that all compartments of the ballot box are empty. The ballot box must then be closed and locked and remain locked until after the polls close. That is also true. Before the polls open, the judges must compare the ballot sheets and the tabulator zero tape with the specimen ballots provided. All judges must then sign the appropriate form verifying that these inspections were made. True. Before the polls open, it is recommended that the election judges review the information on the affidavits. This step is especially important for the newly appointed election judges. Again, it's true. If the election authority's office cannot provide a replacement judge for a judge who is absent, the judges present in the polling place may appoint a replacement judge. This appointed judge must be the same political affiliation as the missing judge. Replacement judges cannot be sworn in until after 6.15 a.m. And we have another true. I promise they're not all true. Polling place signs must be placed at the polling place entrance and also on the public roadway nearest to the entrance of the polling place. It's true. Voting instructions and specimen ballots must be posted in and around the polling place on election day. True. Before a voter completes an application to vote, the election judge must first check the vote by mail early in grace period voter list to determine if the voter has already voted. That is true, and please remember to check that list throughout the day. Grace period registration and voting is now available through election day at locations specified by the election authority. That is true, and grace period registration is available at all polling places in DuPage County on election day. A voter who attempts to register to vote on election day but fails to provide the proper documentation, is eligible to vote a provisional ballot. That is true. Judges should not rotate positions during the day because it may cause fraud. That is false. Judges should rotate positions during the day because it reduces fraud and it is state law. The campaign free zone is made up of the polling room, the distance within 100 horizontal feet of any such room. No electioneering of any type shall be allowed within this marked area. That is true, and remember you are the sole authority of the campaign free zone. Electioneering is defined as working for or in the interest of a candidate, party, or proposition. That is true. Representatives of your election authority, the State Board of Elections, 
the Attorney General's office, the state's attorney's office, and any law enforcement official may be present before, during, or after the election as long as they are acting in their official capacity. That is true. And remember, you can ask to see their identification, but you do not keep it. A poll watcher must be registered to vote in the jurisdiction in which they are serving. That is false. They just have to be registered in the state of Illinois. After a poll watcher has surrendered their proper credentials and signed in with the election judges, they may come and go throughout the day unless such activity is disruptive. And that is true, as long as they utilize that sign-in and sign-out sheet. Candidates and precinct committeemen cannot serve as poll watchers even if they have poll watcher credentials. That is false. They just cannot electioneer. Poll watchers are allowed to handle any of the documents and materials the election judges use on election day. That is false. Poll watchers are not allowed to touch anything. Voters may have their right to vote challenged by an election judge, a poll watcher, or any voter who is legally allowed to be in the polling place. That is true. Assistance may be given by a friend, relative, or two election judges, one from each political party. That is true. Any voter receiving assistance in the voting booth must fill out an assisted av voter affidavit. This affidavit must be completed and signed by the voter and by the person or election judges who provided the assistance. That is true. Any completed affidavit must be placed on the spindle with the voter's application. That is true. Any successfully challenged voter must be notified of his or her right to receive a provisional ballot. That is true. The election judge must verify that the voter is in the correct precinct before issuing a provisional ballot. That is true, and if you have any questions about that, make sure to call your election authority. After they are completed, provisional ballots should be inserted into the tabulator and the affidavit should be attached to the voter's application. That is false. Provisional ballots do not go into the tabulator. If the voter makes a mistake or spoils the ballot, they may be given another ballot. The original ballot must be spoiled and placed in the spoiled ballot envelope. The voter's application must be marked to show the voter spoiled a ballot. That is true. If the tabulator rejects the voter's ballot because of an overvote, the voter has the option to spoil that ballot and request a new one. That is true. They can also just vote that ballot as is, and that race that they overvoted for just won't count. 
The emergency bin should be opened and used if the tabulator becomes inoperable. Voting should never stop. That is true. An election judge must offer instructions to every voter on the proper way to mark the ballot sheet. Again, that is true. Two judges who sit at the verification records, one from each political party, must check that the handwriting and address on the voter's application matches those on the verification records. True. Beginning with the number one, the ballot applications are numbered consecutively and spindled in numerical order. That is true. Tracking your numbers means to verify that the number of spindled ballot applications equal the number of ballots processed through the tabulator. True. Election judges should pre-initial the ballot sheets before the voters arrive. That is false. Ballots should only be initialed as they are handed out to voters. Before giving the ballot sheet to the voter, the ballot distribution judge shows the voter how to use the secrecy sleeve so that the judge's initials can be seen by the tabulator judge. That is true. Curbside voting is available to voters who are unable to enter the polling place. That is true. If a voter who voted earlier in the day returns to vote again because they think they made a mistake, the voter can vote again. The voter must complete a cancel first ballot affidavit. That's false. You can't vote twice. Once you voted, you voted. The ballot box judge must ensure that the voting booth remains free of campaign literature and that no one interferes with the voter throughout the day. That is true. Ballot write-in votes are counted only for those candidates who filed a declaration of intent to be a write-in candidate with your election authority. That is true. So no Mickey Mouse for president. This doesn't work. All ballots in the emergency bin must be processed after closing the polls and before closing out the tabulator. That is true. Always make sure to check that bin before you close out the tabulator. Unused, spoiled, and damaged ballots should be disposed of at the polling place. Only voted ballots should be returned to the Central Counting Center. That is false. Return them to your counting center with your voted ballots. Two judges from the same political party shall immediately transport the ballot sheets, tabulators, and all other supplies as directed by the election authority to the counting center. That is false. They must be from the opposite political parties. Alright, now we're into multiple choice. A registered voter is flagged on your precinct list as needing to show identification prior to voting for the first time on election day. What steps should the election judge follow to ensure that the voter is allowed to vote on election day? A. Allow them to vote like any other voter, whether they have identification or not. B. If they do not have any identification, they cannot vote under any circumstance. C. 
asks the voter for identification. If the presented identification verifies his or her name and address matches the provided records, the voter will be eligible to vote a ballot that will be placed in the ballot box. If they do not provide the proper identification, they will be entitled to vote a provisional ballot only. It is C. So go ahead and ask the voter for identification. And if everything matches up with the identification, they can vote as normal. Otherwise, they'll have to vote provisionally unless they can go get their identification. Voters will be required to provide information and sign an affidavit on election day in order to A. Vote a provisional ballot B. Update name and address on registration C. Request assistance D. All of the above It is D. All of the above Basically, there's an affidavit for everything. Voters that have requested assistance may be helped by the following individuals. A, a friend or relative. B, two election judges, one from each political party. C, a voter's employer. Or D, both A and B. It is both A and B, which is a friend or relative, or two election judges, one from each political party. If the tabulator in the polling place becomes inoperable for any reason, the election judges should call the election authority or a designated technical judge, continue voting hearing using the emergency bin, close the polling place and direct voters to come back later, or D, both A and B. Obviously, you want to call the election authority and... You also want to keep voting using that emergency bin. Please do not close the polling place and direct the voters to come back later. If the ballot sheet contains a valid write-in vote, the election judges should, if the election results seem close, tally the votes on the tally sheet, Enter the candidate's name, office, and valid vote totals on the write-in tally sheet provided in the election day supplies. Notify all the write-in candidates on their cell phones that their votes were counted. D. None of the above. You want to enter the candidate's name and office on that valid vote total tally sheet and provided in your election day supplies. And if, even if you don't have any valid write-ins, make sure to write none on that valid write-in sheet um, just so that the election authorities know that they don't have to worry about any write-ins from your precinct.